All right, lads, welcome back to the Raw Rugby YouTube channel. And I am the rugby fan. My link will be down below. Go subscribe to my channel. We're trying to hit 500 to 1,000 subscribers and any help is appreciated. I've already done a video here. You might have seen it. It's about Craig Gilroy. And thanks to the popular demand, I'm back. They ask you how you are. You just have to say that you're fine. When you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. But anyway... Today I'm going to give you a bit of a rundown on what I think the Six Nations table is going to look like come the end of it. So in last place, I imagine them to put up a fight, but as always, we're going to have Italy down there. They're going to be right down there in sixth. And I just can't see them having the talent to you know, make a real challenge for the title as always. This is the, always the unexciting part of the table. Now I can see them maybe causing an upset against France because they're in turmoil a bit. And I don't see France doing much better either. I'd say I put them down in fifth. But Italy just don't have the higher grade quality of talent apart from Sergio Parise, who is about 35 nowadays. And they're really going to start needing to find a new player. And I don't think he's as mobile as he could be, obviously, with the aging. So it's Conor O'Shea's kind of reign is going to come in this season now. And hopefully they put up a fight in each of the games. But I don't see them doing much excitement. They're going to finish bottom of the pile again maybe get an upset against France. But I imagine Conor O'Shea will be able to at least keep his job coming up to the next World Cup and hopefully he'll be able to put the system into place so Italy won't be that dead cert last place as they have been for the last few years and they'll be able to start getting the talent through the academies that they've started setting up over in Italy. In fifth, I just mentioned there, there's gonna be France. France have just got rid of their new coach, Guy Noves, who was losing games down in South Africa. It was not what it seems. It was, they were experimental squads. They had a rake of injuries going down there. And the South Africa squad is kind of rejuvenating. And Guy Noves was trying to put a different brand of rugby on it. That he found some good quality players. And now he's been kicked out. And Jacques Brunel has been brought in, the old Italian coach. But when I remember him in Italy, he's not that exciting either. He was solid scrum and lineouts because that's what Italy can do best over the years. And apart from that, it's kind of hard to tell because it was it was coming to an end of the golden era and they were running out of those players that got them into the Six Nations. So it's kind of hard to tell how talented of a manager he is. He did beat France before with Italy, which was pretty historic. It was great to see. His victories against Ireland as well. Well, it'll be interesting to see what sort of team he brings. He's brought Morgan Parr back, who I think will be key for the Six Nations, but I just don't think they'll have a settled enough squad going in, and it'll be a poor Six Nations for France. Now, this is where it starts to get a bit tougher for me. In fourth, I'm going to put Wales, and it's down to their injury crisis, I'm going to put it down as. But they've lost Dan Bigger, Faletau, Warburton, and John Davies as well, and like, those are all key players to how they play. Now, maybe they could survive without Warburton because he's getting a lot of injuries recently. And David Mavidi and Tipperick. It's about to say Lydiot, but he's also injured again. So, like, they have these players coming in to replace him, but they're, they're not as good. Like, their second choice, 10 of who I'd imagine is either going to be Priestland or Patchell. I'm not sure what other options there are. Comment down below if you can tell me any other options. But they're just not going to have that ability they usually have. They're a team who's kind of out of form at the moment. Now they have good players coming through. Finally, Josh Navid, I've rated him for years, and he's finally broken into that back line due to the injuries. So hopefully we get to see a good Six Nations from him. I'm excited to see what he could do. Alan Wynne jones is coming to the end of his career, but I imagine him to be a great leader in every single game. And they're going to beat France and Italy. At least they might put a fight up against Ireland and Scotland. Maybe even England cause an upset there. But yeah, I imagine them finishing in fourth place. In third place, it's starting to get really difficult to start picking these now. And I'm going to put Scotland in at number three. It is not because I think Scotland are the third best team there. I think their coach is just untested at this level. Gregor Townsend, he was a great manager for Glasgow Warriors. And for him to transfer that across the international stage, I imagine there's going to be some teething problems this season. And with the veterans of international management that is Joe Schmidt and Eddie Jones and not veterans as they've been there for decades they just have their game plans set they are very experienced coaches they have this game plan they know their players they trust their players and the team is generally quite settled the two of them 
Scotland, still young, still exciting, still brilliant. There's players come back from injury like Mark Bennett. They have great, like Hugh Jones in there. John Barkley's in great form still. So they probably have the best back three in the Six Nations with Hamish Watson, John Barkley, and Ryan Wilson. They also very exciting youngsters like Stuart McAnally, who I imagine to be, he has the potential to be one of the best hookers in the Northern Hemisphere, at least if he keeps going the way he's going. He's a very good talent and hopefully I get to see him in the number two jersey throughout this Six Nations. And of course they have their catalyst of any attack and that's Stuart Hogg. He is incredible. He can win games on his own. He did so against Ireland last year and I imagine him going to put up a great fight this year again. But unfortunately I only see him finishing in third place. In second place I see Ireland finishing there. They don't have their greatest squad that they've had in years. Johnny Sexton seems to keep getting injured so on. If he stays fit for all six games, I see us putting up a great challenge against England. But we also have very tough away fixtures this year. Only two home fixtures, so it's our tougher Six Nations year. And hopefully we can go a big fight against two eventual winners who I think are going to be England. Purely because Eddie Jones is the most talented coach in the Six Nations. He himself has brought England up from the very boring short Lancaster side to the exciting squad that they have now. They have the likes of Toji coming through. They have Elliot Daly in the back three, who was brilliant. They have Owen Farrell, nominated World Player of the Year and nominated European Player of the Year. So they have these incredible players and with the likes of a coach of Eddie Jones on top, I think they're just going to pip Ireland to the post and probably beat them, beat them themselves. Ireland always seemed to play well against England, but this year I'm not sure. But just because of our inexperienced talent, we have raw talents like Jordan Larmer and Jacob Stockdale coming through who can change games, but we're missing a very good player in Simon Zebo and experience, so we're losing a bit in attack when I imagine Rob Kearney is going to be starting. And of course, we've lost Gary Ringrose, another great talent. He's gone through injury for the first couple of games. So that's going to leave us a bit blunt in attack with an inexperienced international in Bondiaki, although I imagine him to play well. So overall in this Six Nations, it's one of the toughest ones to predict and one of the most exciting ones to be there. I'll leave a list of my predictions there on the side. Um, if you like the video, like, comment, subscribe, subscribe to this channel, subscribe to my channel. And let me know if you're excited about this Six Nations. Probably one of the toughest ones to predict, but probably one of the most exciting ones to watch in, in any of the years we've ever watched them. Even Italy look like they're gonna put up a fight, although I said they'd finish last. And one last thing guys, before I go again, I'd like to thank you so, so much from this channel for getting me up to the 200 and something subscribers I'm on now, I'm not sure. Because when the first video went out, I only had 50. So thank you so much, and hopefully I can hit more landmarks coming soon. All right, good luck.